Hello, I am Rachel with Rachel Morgan Coaching, and today I have Rebecca Clark with me, who is a copywriter who works to elevate your brand voice and natural storyteller. She connects the story of your business to the journey your ideal client is on so that you can create that deeper relationship through the content that you share online. From done for you services to teaching you how to be your own copywriter, she wants you to show up as your best self and not just for the sake of it. How cool is that? You can only get your client, you can not only get clients, but loyal supporters showing everyone just how amazing you are. So if you're stressed about writing content, I know with the holidays coming up, um, just having to think about one more thing to add to your plate, no pun intended, actually, (laughs) um, this is definitely meant for you. So I'm excited to have her here and share all of her goodness with each of you. All right, she should be joining in just a second. It always takes a second. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining today, Rebecca. Tell us where are you from? Um, I'm in London. Um, I've kind of lived here all my life. You can tell I sound very English. <laughs> I love that though. I love like a good like European accent. So all accents are wonderful, but um I would love to visit London one day. That's definitely Yeah, it'd be so much fun. Yes. Uh so, um, you know, I'm really excited for this conversation today to chat about content strategy because it's one of those things that we stress about and can kind of take over a lot of priorities in what we need to get done in our business, right? Because we're like, we have posts, we have to be consistent and it shouldn't be hard, right? We want it to be easy. Yeah, definitely. Sometimes it, cause it's more an indirect way of selling a lot of the time. It can feel like it's a big strain and you're not getting the results you want. Right. Um, so you do have to really make it efficient with your time so you can work with clients and, you know, spend time with your family, all the other stuff you want to be doing other than posting things. Right. And that's a huge part of why we got into business is so that we can have time to spend with family and moments and things. And so we don't want to fill that time writing content. And so I think it's really cool actually to have this conversation with you, given that you are a copywriter, which is a very different perspective from someone who's a social media manager. So right yes so what do you think really prevents people from planning ahead and writing their content I think it's one of the it's because it's one of those things we have to put in the time beforehand Mm -hmm. but then in the end you end up saving time it's like you know when your house is really messy and you're like this is going to take me so long to clean up but once you have it's so much easier to find things and function Um, so yeah you have to do a bit of work up front but then in the end everything's so much more efficient because you're not sitting at your desk for half an hour coming up with an idea when you have to post in an hour or like Ah. doing it on the fly can make it so much more stressful meaning it's harder to come up with ideas and really write what you want to say. Right I I remember hearing ones like your house should always be like 20 minutes away from being clean right so it's doing all the little up to the big point where it makes it easier for you when you actually get there is what I'm hearing you right yeah so why it's kind of maintenance right right so why do you think we're not doing that like why do you feel like we wait in the moment to write content um I think it's because we're distracted by so many other things that we need to get done now so you know if you don't finish a client project on time that's a really immediate result and um, while content can feel less pressing if it's like oh if I don't post today I'll just post tomorrow or maybe you're feeling oh I'm just not feeling the creativity right now I'm not feeling inspired but I find in terms of creativity if you do, um, get creative on a regular basis you get in that routine of coming up with ideas you can do it almost on demand if you get used to um, coming up with ideas at a certain point in time, like every month, you're, when it comes up to the time to write new content, you're like, oh, I could do this, I could do that. Your brain kind of knows what's going on. Right. Well, I definitely want to go back to that and how you recommend being creative in terms of like your content. Um, but I have to say, like, you know, going back to your point you just made, 
a minute ago. Like, I think when we're in the moment sometimes and we're trying to create content and just post on the fly, right? It's really hard to be creative. Like, there's a pressure to be. And I feel like it never comes out the way that we intend. But when we actually set aside the time to do it, we tend to be more creative and more intentional, more thoughtful, right? Exactly. Um, When I've written longer pieces, um, because I've written all kinds of things, we always say the first draft isn't your best draft. So you might think, oh, you want to do a reel about this. And then when you have time to mull it over, it gets better and better with that time. It doesn't mean you have to spend weeks on it. But if you just give yourself that space to really think about how am I going to do this in the best way possible, it makes your work so much better. That's such a good point to remember that the first time you do something, it might not be perfect and that's okay. That's why you rough draft it and you go back and you review it and you maybe have a second opinion on something, right? Exactly. It's all a different perspective, especially with things like typos. Our brain is really good at seeing what we think we've written Mm. um, because we just, it's the way we are. It's supposed to be a good thing, but when you're trying to write things correctly, (laughs) it means you can skip over typos and stuff like that. So even with the details, it's good to not rush things. So it comes out as professional as possible. Right, right. Yeah, no, that's a really powerful reminder. And um, I think it's kind of like humbling to remember that like it's okay and it's a process and um, it's okay to go back to things, right? And it's okay if you don't have time to go back to things too, right? Like it's, you know, it's okay to take it slowly is basically what I'm hearing you say, right? (laughs) Yeah, definitely. And if you post a reel and you go back and think, oh, I could have done that instead, you can almost redo it because I know you're always reminding me people only see 10%, only 10% of people see what we're posting. So even if you feel like you're being annoying, there'll be loads of people who didn't see the first try. You'll be like, oh, that's amazing. And even if they did, they're going to like it. It's totally amazing to think about that only 10% of the people who follow you see something. You may feel like yeah. I posted on stories and I've done a post and a reel and I sent my email marketing list and all these things, but not everyone sees all of that, right? And so it's okay to repurpose. And I don't want to come back to that. I think that's a really important point. Uh, but I would love to know, like, so, you know, as we're talking about um, prepping for the holiday or prepping your content so that you're not stressed out, you're not, like, what is your number one tip to plan ahead? Okay. I think you have to start with being realistic with yourself. Mm. Sometimes you think, oh, I'm planning ahead, I could do this, this and this. If you look at what else you've got going on in your personal life, and your business, Mm. it's better to put work into fewer posts than struggle with loads. And to have that consistency. And because you're planning ahead, you should know what you have time to create. Mm. Um, And then also making sure that you keep it varied sometimes if you're writing on the fly and you forget what maybe you've posted the previous day and if you're going on about one thing all the time or your call to action is always the same that's not always going to engage your audience because they're not seeing that variety of message and how they can take action right so what I'm hearing is a good way to be on top of it is to like literally maybe sit down and write it out like on this day yeah. I want to post about this and then the next one about that and then that way you make sure you have variety in what you're posting I mean I don't think there's anything wrong in posting the same thing over and over again right because you want to like get this idea out there and make sure it hits home but to make sure that you're consistent in your messaging and your need what I'm hearing you say is the best way is to really write it out yeah I'd say so because if we're trying to figure things out in our head sometimes we forget things or we get confused so just seeing it laid out will make it so much more clear what you need to do um yeah. and probably spark even more ideas you're like writing okay I want to do this you're like oh I could do this as well right. um I know I'm a writer so I'm gonna like writing stuff down but I think it does help to just get it out and work through it Oh, definitely. I know I've definitely printed out a calendar for the month and I'm like, okay, what does this month look like? And what things do I need to be aware of? Like, I know that that's probably another point that you definitely want to bring up, but it's like, okay, what holidays are happening or realistically, where am I going to be at? How can I make this work? What points do I want to make? How do they flow into each other? Do I want to post this mini reels this week? And what to look like? Like, it's actually like very insightful to sit down and plan all this out. It's like planning out your month, 
right? Like in terms of like, a play, not just for like content, but to really get like a good understanding of what's taking place. Exactly. And then you can kind of set goals with it. If you know, you've got a specific launch coming up, you can kind of gear your content towards that. Or if you really want to push a certain offer, you can make sure your content helps you do that. So right. it all like becomes a strategy, not just content marketing it's like a content strategy you just made such a good point when you have like let's say a launch coming up or an offer like it's really easy to be like oh I need to post about this and I'm going to post about it on the fly and maybe share about it in my stories but actually like sitting down and be like well when should I be posting about this what is it like and what do I need to post and really like being intentional right and I think it's really important to, to make sure that you do it in a way that feels comfortable, that you're confident about, that you're not stressed about. You're not, oh my gosh, I didn't post about this right now. Yeah, and I think intentional is a really good word to use because there's like so much content in all types of forms out there. It can be really overwhelming. So if you write a post that's more intentional, it just makes that bigger impact instead of kind of blending into the background. And on top of that, you're going to feel better about it. You're like, oh, I said this and it's going to have this impact on people. So it just feels better for them and for you if you're being really purposeful in what you post instead of just posting because everyone's telling you you need to post so many times a week or whatever. Right. And so writing it down helps you be intentional and purposeful and make sure that you have a plan so that you're not second guessing or you're not worried like oh my gosh what should I be talking about today or I haven't really posted in a while maybe I need to post something oh maybe I'll post this right it helps you have a clear yeah. mind to take that stress out of it for you especially with the holiday yeah. thing exactly you don't want to be on Christmas Eve thinking, well, I, I need to post something next week. What am I going to do? Like, if you can do stuff when it works best for you, like, um, I recommend people bulk write their content mm. so they can sit down when they have the time and write it out. And then that's done. Like, they don't have to think about it anymore. They can schedule it and they don't have to worry about it. So do when things are best for you instead of doing it as the deadline comes up. Right. So how do you recommend bulk writing? Because I think that is maybe, I know for me, like, sometimes, like, what should I be writing about? And how can I write this really effectively? Like, it's the actual copywriting of the content. So since you had brought that up, I'm really curious, like, how, how do you get creative? How do you get inspired? I think, um, kind of being aware of your writing habits, even if you feel like, oh, I'm not a writer, we always all have, like, ways we prefer to write maybe um you prefer to do it once you've got all your client work done for the day because otherwise you'll be stressed about that or maybe you prefer to write when you first get up because that's when you're most focused so it makes it easy because if you have these bad experiences of writing when you're on the commute to somewhere or something like that you get it in your head that you're not a good writer when it's not it's just you're not in ideal situations so I think finding like your space in your time to write is really helpful mm. um I like that is knowing like when your creativity or your focus is on point and I think knowing where your priority is for the day too maybe you do need to get work done and so you push it out a little bit right and and work on it later in the day but maybe but setting yeah. your personal time to work on it is a really great tip. yeah it's almost creating time for planning ahead <laughs> um but when your mind's in the right place, it's so much easier to do things. Mm -hmm. um, especially with writing, when a lot of people just feel like, oh, I'm not a writing person, I can't do it. But if you give yourself the best, I guess, environment to do it in, you're giving yourself the best chance, really. Right. Um, and then copywriter-wise, in terms of techniques, um, it sounds really simple, but I find splitting content up into beginning, middle and end mm -hmm. just makes it so much simpler. So you're thinking at the start, what am I going to do that's going to make people interested in this? They're going to think, I want to read on, especially if it's like on Instagram where you have um, the first bit and then they have to click read more. How are you going to grab their attention? And then the middle part is where you give all the good stuff. What do you, what three, five points, however long the pieces you want to make, um, even kind of making subheadings in your head even if you don't set it out as subheadings 
that can be paragraphs or bullet points mm-hmm. and then at the end the call to action what was the whole purpose of of this thing what do you want them to do it might just be to try out a technique and let them know let you know how they got on or of course um book a call with you join your course um whatever it is that you want them to do at that final point especially because a lot of the content online is shorter just having that three I guess three act structure kind of keeps you focused on what you're writing at that point in the piece of content I like how you said that you said your basically your headline is like what can you say to grab attention and go pe- and get people to go, I, I want to read more. I remember hearing this like a, like a newspaper, right? Like you have to grab attention right away. And so uh, kind of like a newsworthy type headline, right? And then knowing that what it, the next part needs to be three to five points, right? In relation to that headline. And then at the end, your call to action is really, what is the purpose for that? I've never heard someone actually say that. And that's so true because there is a purpose for what we're saying and the call to action should be in relation to that yeah exactly the purpose of content marketing in general is to get people to take action and that then leads to sales obviously you don't all want to be like oh I'm only posted to get sales but it all works towards um, building your relationship with people so if ever you're doing is helping that relationship then it's kind of selling (laughs) right and not all like purposes have to be to encourage people to buy either it can definitely be uh, for market research it can be out of curiosity it could be to build engagement maybe you're just curious what people have to say or maybe you want to drive them to a certain area like it doesn't always have to be just for sale right um so it all kind of goes together right but um, I think that's important to remember, like, what is the purpose of what I'm writing? And that makes it easier, almost in a way, to write your content, right? Yeah, when you have that aim in mind, it stops you going off on tangents or thinking, is this the right thing to say? Because you know what your end goal is and everything you're writing is kind of building up to that. Right, right. So, okay. What other tips do you have to help you plan and be on top of your content? Yeah, so I think having an overview of what you want your audience to know about in general. So that includes your offers, your freebies, any events you're holding. Um, It's always good to know that because then you can sprinkle that in throughout the month um, or however long you're planning for. And like I say, spread it out so we have consistent messaging, but we're not um, being too repetitive. Mm. um then also maybe thinking about what topics you want to cover um what's your expertise what does that include for example I'm a copywriter and I do email marketing and I do blog posts so if I was to only talk about one of those topics the whole month people wouldn't know that I have this other expertise so making sure you cover the different uh, I guess subtopics in your niche can be really helpful as well um I like that and I'm doing like your pillars and knowing the different aspects of things that we talk about and when we are writing it down and being strategic we can actually see are we talking about this because sometimes we're too close to it I find we don't realize yeah. we haven't been talking about something else like I get I'm like questions where I'm like isn't that obvious but it wasn't because I didn't like explain it well enough I thought I had but I didn't Right. And I'm sure you get the same thing. You write copy for this and you're like, well, of course I do. Right. And so not only are we um, getting on top of our content, but we're recognizing an area that maybe we need to explore more or that we're missing out on because we're actually sitting down strategizing. Right. Exactly. And I think reviewing is a really important part of content planning just looking over what you've previously posted what have you covered what haven't you covered um and then you can also look at insights and feedback what did well what didn't do as well what you can take from that um it's not that if something doesn't go viral it's not important it could have the purpose of nurturing your current um audience which means you might not get tons of engagement but just being aware of how things are going for you and using that as feedback to move forward 
piece of maybe a piece of content did really well it's because that's really on people's minds at the moment so they want to hear more about that topic um so yeah always looking for ways to improve and understand what your audience wants from you right I think that's a good like reminder too on how to be creative right is like to go back through your content and see what people are saving what are they sharing what got a lot of engagement and and like look at those and is there a common theme between them is it like your reels that consistently is there a certain topic um is it it could be so many different things right was it a carousel was it because of a tip that you shared and people really love the fact that you constantly shared tips and I think getting creativity out of that and then being comfortable with repurposing right because again Mm -hmm. we said 10% of your audience will see what you put out so just because you repurpose or reshare doesn't mean someone saw it the first time yeah so if something's done really well how are you going to say that in a different way or if something didn't do as well we could think if I did it in this way would it be more appealing to people um I think reviewing is really important of in getting better not necessarily that you're doing bad now but things change all the time so what people want to engage with can also change so you can't think oh I know everything about my content for my audience because I think that's the thing about online businesses they're always changing and adapting right well and we're getting new followers that probably haven't read everything we've put out either and this is an opportunity to share that with them right and so I think even when you're writing your content and you're repurposing and being intentional it's okay to do the same thing over and over again right I mean those are your pillars talking point but I think that we forget what we haven't been mentioning like you said when we're not sitting down and looking yeah exactly and it's a massive time saver if you've already got like five points that you can just and you did it in a carousel now you can do it in a rail that's saving you time which we all need to do and um, it's kind of well not the whole point of planning but a big benefit of planning having working really efficiently Right. And Sandra, I love it. You said exactly what I just said. We have new audiences all the time. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And we want them to know what we're all about. We want to make sure that we nurture them, and take care of them. And so it's okay to repurpose. It's okay, you know, and repurposing could look like taking a reel and then making it into a carousel, right? Or yeah, taking exactly. a blog post and making it into a post. Like there's so many ways that you can reuse information. I know for me, like if I share a post, I love to make a out of it and like talk about it and almost expand on that a little bit more in my stories because not everyone who views my stories sees my posts and vice versa right yeah and it could even be like changing perspective say um you talked about something you'd experienced in quite a personal post you could almost switch it around a bit and do it as a list of tips or quick wins mm-hmm. so it's just framed slightly differently um, which will appeal to new people and also it just means you're not being really repetitive you're saying the same things but in a different way and that's yeah. how people keep getting the message without you know being turned off or something like that that is a really excellent tip is to look at your top content maybe right from what people love and ask yourself how can i reframe this how can I do yeah. this in a different way? And that gives you creativity. So maybe like what you were saying is, you know, you schedule the time to write your content. So maybe schedule a day where like, I'm going to go back through my post for this last month. I'm going to really notice of what um, people are liking and then look at it and think, how can I repurpose this? How can I deliver the same idea, but maybe in a fresh way, right? And that gives you your Yeah, and that will cut down on the time where you have to think of new ideas. Um, obviously there'll always be times where you think oh I want to talk about this and that's great but if you've got your existing content to rely on already it kind of takes that stress away because you're not like I'm starting from scratch you're building on what you've already done. I think that there is this like pressure to be constantly creative and to constantly come up with new ideas but what you're saying and something like I've literally never thought about is to just go back through your content and re- it and reuse it and I mean I've, I know the idea of repurposing and reusing but I've never thought about taking that time to really like analyze your posts and really go through and ask yourself how can I reword this or how can I explain the topic or how can I recreate this in a different format and like 
how much time that saves and how much pressure that takes off and being creative because you've already spent so much time writing that post most likely. Right. So why not expand on that? Why not use that? Yeah. And there'll be people who benefit from it because they didn't see it or they've just started following you. Um, there's never like an idea that you have about your business that isn't worth sharing. Someone's going to benefit from it. Oh, I love that. It's so true. It really is. And I think that we forget that is that our content, really benefits someone even if it's one person right and yeah. so it's it's good to be consistent it's good to be intentional and it's good to make sure that you're sharing that with someone and all your goodness that you know exactly we don't know everything but there are people who don't know anything about what we know so it's not really a competition to know the most it's just it's almost like a cycle of sharing information right right and it's Oh, I just, I, it's like so powerful when you think about how like your content can really impact someone. I mean, this is totally off topic, I know, but I think just re reminding yourself of that and the content that you write can really make a difference on someone. Like you, you never know who needs to hear what you have to say. Yeah. And if you really believe in yourself and have that confidence, sitting down to plan and write content is going to be so much easier because it feels like so purposeful. Like you're doing something really meaningful. You're not just posting um, because you think you should, you're posting because you know it's going to make an impact on people. And that's really exciting. It is exciting. I agree. Well, Rebecca, do you have any other juicy tips that you would love to share with us on how to stay on top of our content? Yeah, I think my top three like things to take away would be to think how you can make things time efficient in terms of when's the best time for you to plan, um, and write things so you're not doing things as they come up you're doing you're working smarter not harder I like that phrase <laughs> yes we all like that um being consistent so feeling okay with repeating certain things just saying it in a new way um and feeling good about kind of your schedule so you're not feeling pressure to post every day if that just doesn't work for you set in a schedule that works for you mm -hmm. um and then yeah strategizing reviewing what you're doing um thinking about how it all fits into your sales funnel mm -hmm. um repurposing to really engage with your audience so yeah i'd say being time efficient consistent and strategizing and it all should be so much easier <laughs> I love what um, Sandra, oh my gosh, I love the chair. I just have to say this. Allison said, I didn't think I was making a difference until someone messaged me saying that I had changed their life and that they had started writing gratitudes and being more positive. That is so powerful. That's I love that. Yeah. Sandra, I love that you just cheered her on. Like, so cool to be. <laughs> and it's so true. Like, you know, not everyone, you know, even if they – are commenting or engaging like people still see what you post and sometimes need the reminder and you just like you literally know what someone is going through and um, I know that's definitely not about being on top of your content but it is important to remember that your content has purpose even if it's not to make a sale right it can really life exactly and that's still worthwhile doing um I know in the online business world it's there's a lot of pressure to focus on numbers but mm -hmm. Um, at least the way I work, I don't really get motivated by numbers. I get motivated by the connections I'm making and the impact I'm having and the stuff that's more meaningful than just, well, I made seven sales. It was like, right. instead of I impacted seven people's lives today. Right, right. Well, thank you. And I love that you said, okay, just to summarize one more time, be consistent, be strategic. And you said, um, oh my gosh, I'm missing the word that you said. Efficient efficient yes with your time management yeah so setting aside the time to come up with the strategy and then reusing the uh, content that you already have and maybe a fresh perspective yeah right definitely and I loved your tip earlier where you said when writing content remember that your headline is what draws people in to want to read more then list your three to five bullet points and then end it with the what is the purpose of this post your call to action yeah yes exactly Oh, I love it. And anything else you'd like to add from a copywriter perspective? Um, I just want to be I, think, <laughs> I think 
even though I'm a copywriter, I do like to remind people of their mindset and feeling confidence in their abilities. Just because they don't have a degree in writing doesn't mean that the content they produce is bad. Um, what you have to say is worthwhile. And if you really believe that, it, I feel like it does come through in the content you produce. That confidence, that energy really shines through in what you write. So remember to look after yourself and then your content will end up I guess looking after you because it helps grow your business. Yes. Oh my gosh. What a perfect like way to end. I love this. That was such a, a great reminder that you don't have to be a professional to write content, though there are strategies that will help, right? Um, but that you do your best and you let your personality shine through. But say exactly. if someone does want to work with a professional, potentially you, how can they work with you? Yes, so I do one-to-one -one work with clients where I write content for them, whether that's content marketing like we've been talking about here, websites, sales pages, email sequences, all that good stuff. Um, the easiest way to get in contact with me is through Instagram, Powered Up Content. You can send me a DM, um, check the link in my bio for my website and all the good stuff I've got on there. Um, and I've also started finding ways to help people to be their own copywriter. Um, so I came out with a course on email marketing, if that's something you're struggling with. Um, and I have a couple of other things in the pipeline that will be announced around Black Friday. But I can't say any more than that. So excited. I can't believe Black Friday is literally three weeks away. Like, wow. <laughs> All right. Well, if you are looking for someone to either help you write or teach you how to write, or you're interested in knowing what's for Black Friday, definitely make sure to follow Rebecca. I can attest that she really cares about the work that she does and the clients she serves and really does do an amazing job she does. So I definitely, um, the only good things from connecting with her, and I know that she's always happy to talk to new people. So thank you so much. Of course. And thank you to everyone that joined in. We appreciate you. And if you have any questions, like I said, please feel free to share us. We're more than happy to join. And Rebecca, thank yeah. you so much for joining us and sharing all your wisdom with us. I know I definitely learned a few things and I'm ready to go get writing. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to do, inspire people to write. <laughs> oh, and you do. I can tell. So, all right. Well, thank you so much for joining. And everyone, I hope you enjoy your day. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Ah, my pleasure. Bye. Bye. Bye.